we have to see the the revelation of what it is that Paul and Peter and the writer of Hebrews are all trying to say concerning the knowledge of the truth. You know, 2 Timothy 3, 7, Hebrews 10, 26, 2 Corinthians 10, 6, uh, John, uh, yeah, John chapter 8, verses 30, verse 32, you know, concerning the you will come to know the truth that will make you free. Same thing Paul is talking about to Timothy when he says, some are ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Or in 2 Corinthians 10, 6, when he says, having a readiness to punish every disobedience when your obedience is full or complete. And you see in verse 15, he says, and when your faith is increased, he says, we shall be enlarged beyond your borders. Talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ shall be enlarged beyond their borders because they will come into full age in Christ and to obedience through that faith of the knowledge of the Son of God as he describes in Ephesians uh, chapter 4. You know, and, you know, in, in the we're justified by faith as he describes in Galatians chapter 3 uh, uh, I mean most of that chapter I mean I hate to single out one verse because it all describes it uh, you know and how that you know we were kept under the law we were watched like a sentinel you know, until the faith, which afterwards should be revealed, talking about Jesus Christ, you know, that form of the knowledge and of the truth that is in the law that Christ is a fulfillment of, you know, um, we are justified by faith, you know, and, and we live by faith. You know, and the righteousness of God is revealed in the good news of Jesus Christ from faith unto faith. And that is how we live. And we're changed into the same image as from glory to glory. As he describes in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 18. You know, as by the Spirit of the Lord. Who gives us liberty from the law of sin? In 2 Corinthians 13, Eight, where he says, well, we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. And it has to do with, you know, we have no power over the truth, for we are born of the truth. And we got to see that. I mean, nothing that God done in Christ has any power in our life until we have faith in it. I mean, and that, this is the whole point. We enter through faith. Our deliverance is through faith. That's why the writer of Hebrews says in 1026, there remains no more sacrifice for sin once you've come to the knowledge of the truth or the full discernment of the truth. Or as he describes in Ephesians, the, you know, the, the uh, faith, of the know in the knowledge of the Son of God, because we got to see that that faith that He is talking about that He that we're all supposed to come to the unity of is in the knowledge of the Son of God that Peter describes. You know, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge or the full discernment of God and of Jesus Christ. You know, because it is through faith that that what God done in Christ has power in our life. We've got to see that when we believe that Jesus, God raised Jesus from the dead and we were willing to confess him Lord and surrender our will and bury ourselves with him in baptism, 
You know, as he describes in Romans 6, 3, and 4, he says, you know, you know, as many were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death, buried with him in baptism. That is a surrendering of our will, dying to self. That's what he's describing in Galatians 2, 20. I'm, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ who lives in me in the life I live right now. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, living by that faith means that I'm dead and he lives in me. I'm I'm allowing him, I'm, I'm surrendering my will every day as he describes in Romans 12, 1. You know, I, I call you near to listen by the mercies of God, present your bodies as living sacrifices unto God, which is holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service, meaning the beginning of the found, the, 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 the bare minimal of our spiritual worship to God that we may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God is. Because in unless we enter into that spiritual worship and we are sur surrendering ourself to him i mean because that's the whole point of believing that god raised him from the dead and being baptized into jesus and into his death is that we're willing to confess him lord that means make him lord that means die to self every day, moment by moment, not as I will, but as you will. And someone who is self-willed, Peter describes in his first letter, you know, presumptuous, self-willed, you know, uh, by, by whom the way of the truth is evilly spoken of or blasphemed. <laughs> as the Greek actually means. So, I mean, we got to see that it is, it is through the faith in the knowledge or the full discernment of the Son of God, of Jesus Christ, that we enter into that full age and we enter into that liberty where we see what it is that we are in him you know we as Peter said we're not born again of a corruptible seed but the incorruptible word of God whom Jesus said is the truth he says sanctify them by your truth your word is truth for their sake I sanctify myself that they too may be sanctified by the truth John 17, 17 and verse 17 and 19. You know, sanctification isn't a growing out of sin. It is a put it is a sanctification and purification of the flesh as we, through the faith of Christ living in us, surrender ourselves and offer our bodies as living sacrifices, as he said in 1 Corinthians 15, 36, the body we sow is not given life unless it dies. As we surrender our will to him, you know, we're not doing it by our will. We're just surrendering our will to him. That's how we submit ourselves to God, to resist the devil. You know, so I'm going to end it at that, you know, and... Uh, May this word be a, a, a strength, a strength to those who are sincerely seeking and pressing into God. You know, as Jesus said on the on the eve of this crucifixion, when he went to the garden with a few of his disciples and had them wait apart and pray for an hour. And in in Luke 22, I believe it's chapter 22 where uh Luke gives the testimony of Jesus when he went apart to pray. It says that he sweated as it were great droplets of blood that he was in such anguish of the flesh. The trial of the flesh 
against the spirit was so strong that he sweated blood in his hour of temptation the eve before his crucifixion he said if it be possible let this cup pass from me he says all things are possible with you he says but nevertheless not as I will, but as you will. You know, and the writer of Hebrews, you know, in uh, chapter 5, verse 8, saying, Though he were a son, yet he learned the obedience by the things which he suffered. You know, taking in, talking about in the days of his flesh when he offered up prayers with strong cryings, with tears. You know, no doubt receiving testimony from you know people who had had been present then when Jesus was still alive and and you know my guess is is whoever the writer was you know knew knew those closest to Jesus you know uh, we need to see the significance of surrendering our will to him and 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 it's not about willpower is you know it's just about surrendering to him you know and it's not about putting her you know it's it's by faith it's by faith in the knowledge of the Son of God that brings us into that liberty that brings us into full age and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this one at that in Jesus name